Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I just wanted to come on for a few minutes and say hey and how you doing and all that. But also, I had a little bit of a word for you uh, today. If I was going to title this as a sermon, um, I was going to call. I'm going to call it the gift of isolation. You know, now when we're all shut up in our houses and we're all doing the same thing around the world, um, we're all in isolation. Um, many of us have different reactions to it. Uh, some of us are um, bored to tears. Some of us are worried and some of us are stressed. Some of us are just taking it easy. We're praying more, we're reading our Bible. We're not having a great time, but learning or finding ways to cope with this. And it occurred to me that Isolation could be a gift. Now, I'm not saying COVID-19 is a gift. COVID-19 is from hell. It needs to be uh, sent back to once it came and they need to find us a solution, whether that be a vaccine or medication for this virus. Um, but what, I, what I'm meaning by gift is it gives us time to reflect because when we when we as a people are so busy running here and running there we don't make the time to reflect so i believe that god is using covid19 to um, really cause us to reflect on our priorities and reflect on him and our relationship with him. I think that sometimes we don't even know how much we've strayed away uh, from our relationship with Jesus Christ because um, acti activity keeps our minds so busy that we don't even understand how much we've strayed away and we don't really really understand how far we've gone until it's too late and we don't even understand that we're just so busy because we're we're still praying we're still reading our bible we're still doing the mechanical things that we're supposed to do but we are slowly drifting away from what we used to do so i would say beloved just take this time to first take this time to do two things take this time actually three things take this time to reflect on your relationship with god Take this time to reflect on the relationship with yourself. Take this time to reflect on your relationship with your family. And I think when you take this time to reflect on those three things, it will, you'll come out of this quarantine situation having learned stuff. And I think, um, I always say this, everything in life is a lesson. You just have to look for what God is trying to teach you or for what life is trying to teach you. Everything in life um, can be designed for you to gain muscle because sometimes um in the gym for those of you who work out in the gym 
heavy weights are designed to build muscle. Sometimes we let heavy weights crush us, but they're really designed to build muscle. So let this time in quarantine let you build muscle. And let me just um, quickly go through those three things that I talked about. First, your relationship with God. Where is your relationship with God? Are you hot or are you cold or are you somewhere in between? What things do you need to work on? Do you need to read your Bible more? Do you uh, need to work on worship more? Like in just telling him, Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you for what you're, what you're doing. And thank you for who you are. Uh, do you need to read your word more? Do you need to find a Bible reading plan? A lot of people think that there's some exact science um, to getting the relationship with God, God down. I tend to believe that God works with who you are and who he's made you to be. He doesn't expect you to be your pastor. He doesn't expect you to memorize the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If that's your talent, great, do it. Uh, he, he doesn't expect anything from you but to be you. He wants a relationship with you, not a relationship from someone with someone that your pastor says you have to be or someone that um, someone that you told yourself that you have to be. Um, like any relationship, you have to let the relationship with God in yourself happen naturally and just let it flow. And I said this a few months ago in my YouTube video. I said, in order to start off the relationship with God, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that's the first part. That's just receiving the initial salvation. But after that, it takes work. And the kind of work it takes depend, depends on the kind of person you are. So how how I started that relationship with God is basically just asking him, okay, Lord, how does this thing work? And he began to show me that he gave me the gift of creativity. So for me, he speaks uh, through creative stories and he could speak through music because that's how he's designed me. So when you find out how God speaks to you, he'll work on that with you. And, and a key that worked for me, now this is not foolproof, this is just work that worked for me, is to write, is to ask him simple questions. And um, you don't have to be embarrassed about the simple questions, but write down what you think he's telling you. And, and you'll, as, you, as you communicate more with him, you'll get to know how he speaks in your life. You'll get to know if he speaks through music or through, or through friends, or predominantly straight through his word. A lot of people can open the Bible, and they 
totally find out what God is saying to them right away. Whereas me, because I'm into music and such a creative person, he often speaks to me through creative story. He might take me to a parable in the Bible, or he might speak to me through a fictional author or a song. Um, he's even speak, spoken to me a couple times through secular music. He'll say, that's the way I feel about you. Uh, you know, and you get to know that it's him because of that relationship that you're built, building. Now, I don't have children, but I've heard that each child is different and you have to, um, parents know how to talk to their children. And God being a good father, he knows how to talk to his children. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the relationship with yourself. See, when you're alone with yourself, um, you can, it can get very um, weird because all of these things can keep cropping up that you would rather forget or rather not deal with. Use this quarantine to deal with the stuff that you're running from. Use this quarantine to deal with the stuff that you're afraid of, to at least start to unravel that. And you know how you start that, how I started that was to just be honest with God and say, I'm struggling here. I don't want to even think about that. I don't want to even deal with that. Show me how to deal with that. And he began to unravel to me why that was such an issue, why I was such, you know, this is just an example, why um, a, I'm such a, um, why I'm so hard on myself. He began to, to take me back to my childhood uh, when I was just so hard on myself because I was uh, winning, I was winning all these awards and getting all these praise. So that's how I learned to get validation. And he was like, that is why you're so hard on yourself. But, and I'm working through that and a bunch of other issues. But it's because I was not afraid uh, to get alone with God and get honest with God. The reason why we have so much mess in our lives, the reason why we use busyness of life to do this, busyness of life to do that, is because we're afraid to be alone in our, with ourselves. And I'm going to say this to you, beloved. You can handle what you have to handle. You can handle the darkness. You can handle the pressure. You can handle what you've been running from. Beloved, Running from it is not going to change the problem. In fact, it's going to compound the problem. And running, God's made it now that you can't run. You have to deal with yourself. And you are strong enough with his help to come through the other side. You don't have to run anymore. And when you deal with whatever issue, you'll come out the other side better and stronger. And beloved, I know it's scary. I know it may be easier to run, but in the long run, it's not gonna hurt anyone but you. 
and in turn, it's going to spew to all those around you. Because if you're hurting, if you're in pain, if you're dealing with fear, if you're dealing with feeling inadequate, if you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with, it's going to spew to those around you. And they're not going to understand why you lash out. The only reason why you lash out is because you're hurting. And beloved, those people around you don't deserve your venom. They deserve to have the wonderful person that you were. And the only way they'll get that person is if you deal with those issues. And sometimes you can't deal with those issues yourself and you need help. So if you need help, beloved, ask for it. Confide in a family member. I know some uh, doctors and therapists are doing telephone calls now. So find someone to talk to, find someone to confide in because you can't, that anger is not hurting anyone except for you. I shouldn't say it's not hurting anyone. I should say the person that that's hurting most is you. That wall you have up, that relationship thing you have up, I won't, I won't let anyone love me because everyone who loved me has hurt me before. Beloved, it's not hurting anyone else as much as it's hurting you. You're keeping love out of your life because you're so afraid to get hurt. You won't even let your mom love you, your brothers and sisters love you, uh, your pastor love you, your e-group love you, or your small group. People have tried to love you, but you push them away to no end, thinking that I just need to do me. It just needs to be the Lord in me. The Lord has never designed you to be alone and just with him. The Lord has designed you to have community. And the last thing about quarantine is to build a better relationship with your family friends and those around you. Oftentimes when we are so busy, we've forgotten to really check in on our family and friends. And this quarantine has really, this gift of isolation has really given us a chance to connect with each other, to check in on each other, to build relationships with each other. I saw something uh, with a worship pastor from a church in Toronto uh, said that it, his fiance, he, he's engaged, his fiance and him are building a closer relationship even though they can't see each other and whatever because they're talking more. Use this time in isolation to really talk and not even just talk, but communicate and listen to those around you. A lot of people talk, but they don't communicate. Talking to me is just the moving of lips. Communication is the expression of something, whether it be the physical expression, the emotional expression, the, you know, that is communication. And when communic when real communication happens, barriers fall. So use this season to really communicate how you feel to those around you. Um, Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you care. And if there are issues, work them out. If there are issues with your sister, work it out. If there are issues with your dad, work it out. If you, 
If there are issues with your husband, work them out. Beloved, life is too short. Life is too short to have issues in your heart without working them out. And because those around you are precious and they need your full attention. I think that sometimes in quote unquote normal life, regular life, we're too busy to give people our, our real real presence. So we're not really present in the relationships that matter. We're talking, I'm guilty of this too. You could be talking to someone on the phone, but you're on the computer while you're talking to them and you're not really paying attention to them. And I'm just saying for myself too, we all have to learn to be present in our lives. When we're in a moment, be in the moment. Don't be off somewhere doing something else. When we are at a space, be at that space. Don't, don't be doing something else. When you're at home, be at home. I know for people who are workaholics, this is probably driving them crazy because they can't work anymore. They can't go to the office. Um, and then they're still on their computer. Be present for your children. They need you. Be present for your wife. She needs you. Be present for your husband. He needs you. Be present for those around you. When I'm saying be present, I mean mind, body, and soul, and really listen to what they're saying and communicate with them what um uh, and communicate with them how you're feeling and communicate with them to the best of your ability how you can make things better because no matter how good your relationship is uh you can always make it better so i thank you for listening to this sermon and have a great evening bye First of all, or last of all, before I sign off, I want to pray. Lord Jesus, I pray for the restoration of families. I declare that now you are restoring families. You are restoring relationships with friends. You are putting things back together which were broken. Oh God, I pray that your Holy Spirit and doubt everyone, Lord Jesus, that is under the sound of my voice. Heal, restore, deliver. Let your healing flow into these families, into this, into these broken situations. Put puzzle pieces back together. Restore marriages, Lord God. Restore relationships between mothers and daughters, fathers and sons. Lord Jesus, let your power and your presence fill your home. Take your, fill homes, Lord Jesus. Take your place, oh God, in our lives, in our homes. Lord Jesus, let, let us give your word its rightful place in our homes. Let us give the presence of God its rightful status in our homes. Let us come to you with all our concerns, Lord Jesus. We come today broken and shattered and we ask for your help and healing hands to restore us. Release your spirit, God. Release a flood of your word and release a flood of your presence, oh God. 
Holy Spirit dwell with us and in us, oh God. Not only dwell with us and in us, oh God, show us tangibly how you are dwelling with us, oh God. Teach us how to be better moms and better dads and better children. Teach us what our spouses need from us. Teach us what our friends need. Help us to ask for what we need from our friends and family. Lord God, I praise you. And I pray that the blood cover every home, oh God, every life. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, sit with us. Dwell with us in the quietness of our quiet time, oh God. Speak to us. Speak to us, Lord God. Move in us, not only in this COVID situation, but Lord, in this time of isolation, show us the gifts that you are revealing through us, Lord Jesus. Show us the gifts of our family members. Show us the gifts of understanding and wisdom that you want us to pick us pick up, Lord Jesus. Let us come out of this uh, quarantine with something that will change our lives, that'll, that'll shift our perspective forever and ever, Jesus. Amen and amen. Break the chain of ap apathy, Lord. Release glory that you have never released before in this earth. I believe that this uh, quarantine is getting us ready for a weight of glory for a uh, presence of glory that we haven't seen in the earth before. Give us strategy, O oh God. Bless us beyond measure, God. Press down, shaking together, and running over, Lord Jesus. Will you pour out into our bosom, O oh God? We worship you. We thank you for what you have done, what you will do, and what you what you did do, what you will do, and what you have done. We thank you and we love you, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, bye. Thanks.